What's up all you YouTubers? Uh, welcome to my channel. Wanted to touch on some uh, news today and uh, you know kind of a bird's eye view of uh, you know more of a macro view and it's kind of you know the whole point of this screensaver video here um, of kind of what's going on and, and you know which way the direction of the traffic is really running on some of these coins that I think are, are wrong and of course as you can see the other side rush hour traffic the other side you know people are commuting the other way and it's obviously very very quick and easy free flow um, so I'm going to touch on a little couple things you know th things like tether um, the macro I'm going to touch a lot on tether actually I'm going to get really really down to the nitty gritty on, on tether and um, you know really what it is all what it's all about um, it's a scheme uh, it's a very well covered scheme uh, it does help traders out in the short run um, but overall, it's 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 a scheme, and I'll get into that of why I think it's a scheme, um, fundamentally based on you know one to one for the U.S. dollar. You know, is U.S. tether really based on the U.S. dollar, or is it just bullshit and it's a scheme? Well, I, I say it's a scheme, so I'm, I'm going to show you why I say that it's a scheme. And of course, I'm going to go over some macro news on uh, mainstreaming. So, uh, you know, let's get right into it. Okay, so cryptocurrency coin market cap, 237 billion right now. 52% Bitcoin dominance went down 1% on dominance and everything's taking a big, nice spike right now. So everything's in the green. Uh, Dogecoin, everybody knows that Dogecoin is taking a big spike up even though they're having some Doge Ethereum fork. Doge Ethereum, I guess is what they're calling it. Uh, Redcoin, uh, just I believe is the Reddit coin, Redcoin. Uh, Vergecoin. That's good to see, 26%, really, really need to pump up at least to a penny. So, you know, finally it's getting up to about two pennies. Uh, see a coin, that's always cool. Bitcoin, eh. Bitcoin Cash, Denticoin. I mean, who keeps pumping Denticoin? I mean, thank you very much, because I, I hold Denticoin, you know, in, the, in a long, long term. Because uh, there's really, they have no rival at this point, and it's an insurance type thing that I think everyone's going to use. Um, Stratus, IOST Dash, Neo's up finally like three bucks, so that's good. I mean, things are starting to go in the direction we want. It's September 1st, um, even in light of the ETFs being denied at the point at this point, or approved, I should say, de de denied for approval. So, uh, let, you know, let's move forward into some news and stuff. Uh, just, just real quick on some things, you know, these extortion schemes that people are doing, you know, cyber thugs threaten cheap air with smear campaign. Now, basically what they're saying is we're going to smear you all over social media because we have bots all over the place and we're going to smear your name if you don't give us, I believe it was like a 1.4 Bitcoin or something like that. And if they don't do it, then they're going to, you know, basically, you know, smudge their name all over social media. And now what gave them the balls to go to, you know, CheapAir.com? CheapAir.com makes a lot of money. So what gave them the balls to go to a big company like this? Um, whether it's a well online website or not, it's a company that makes a lot of money. What gave them the balls to do this? Obviously, they've had um, good, good, I would say, profitable conclusions to to doing this to people. You know what I mean? And so they've gone up in the in the ranks of of now threatening bigger companies like Cheap Air, and, and Cheap Air is just like, no, we're not giving you crap. And they just put out their own blogs and, and so not a social media saying, hey, just watch out for these. This isn't us. Um, like on Twitter, they said it right here. You know, we're under attack. So, you know, just be careful what you're what you're reading when it comes to them. So it, it was just it, it was just funny that, you know, these guys think that they can do this. You know, obviously they've had, um, a, a, again, you know, a positive you know conclusion to what they've been doing. They've been successful at doing this to people. And it's uh, and it's gone so so much to where they're now trying to extort cheap air, and it wasn't even that you know 1.4 Bitcoin, so they're not even asking for much um, to keep their name unsmudged, and that probably they probably had a, you know great success in the past, at least over the past year, and you know so you know things to see you know when it comes to scheming out there, you know manipulation of the market, you know thing people are always trying to leverage 
things, whether it's good or bad. So it, it just sucks because it makes, uh, you know, the cryptocurrency world look bad in that respect. So uh, this was something good that I like to see in the mainstream, you know, a, a BS in Bitcoin. These colleges are now offering cryptocurrency related courses. And this is Stanford. Um, they're giving, you know, they're doing cryptocurrency um, uh, classes now. And I believe Yale is as well. And, and basically what he's saying is, it's gone from the most boring class to the most interesting class. Uh, and I believe he's doing introductory macroeconomics. So macroeconomics is what cryptocurrency is being taught at in colleges. Great thing to see in mainstream. These All these young people, young uh, adults are getting into it. And, um, you know, they're getting a BS in it. So it is the new thing coming out. And, you know, the next four years... These people are all going to be coming out with degrees and it's they're going to be the next people to rise in this in in this uh, trade. You know, what I mean, cryptocurrency trades uh, that are coming out. So uh, great thing to see. So one thing I did, you know, again, a lot of this news was from yesterday. I, I, I researched a lot of this news yesterday, you know, and I um, uh, didn't I just didn't have time yesterday. I was running around with my head cut off. So. Anyway, uh, Ethereum co-founder defends Tether. Now, okay, so this guy, I mean, I really read this, you know, I mean, again, kind of using, uh, you know, our technical thinking here. And, uh, you know, he says, it, it, um, Joseph Lubin, uh, Tether is an interesting project. Would you believe Tether is backed by one-to-one -one by U.S. dollar? Okay, I, I don't, okay, and I'll tell you why here in a second, but this... You know, this is a guy who who was co-founder of Ethereum. OK, so, you know, when they ask him about Ethereum, you know, he has all these things to say about Tether and how it's the U.S. dollar pegged stable coin. OK, keep that in mind. U.S. dollar pegged stable coin of inflating the supply of tokens uh, market in an effort to pump up the price of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So that's the issue. One of the issues with Tether. And of course, that that's wash trading. So they're showing you you know, uh, trade volumes that are not correct. It's basically just been, they were, they're when they're washing their coins at the same time. So actually it's two issues. So, uh, this is one of the issues is they're pumping up the price of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Um, what else does he say on here? And of course he's like, well, he, he's not sure whether the market manipulations are related to direct to tether directly if they do exist. So he, in, you know, he also added that Tether, in his view, is not 100% solid either, and that he believes many other price stable tokens will come in and take over its place. So he doesn't really say whether it's Tether or it's True or whatever these other stable coins that are coming out, but one of, something else is going to take it over. It doesn't matter. All these ones that are based, backed by the U.S. dollar, 100% pegged. Okay, as you say, the U.S. dollar pegged stable coin. Okay. Here, here's where here's where I start putting my eyebrow up. Okay, so when he's asked about Ether's last price correction, the Ethereum co-founder said that he spends his time on creating software rather than trading. Okay, we're right there. Talking about his own project, co-founder of Ethereum, he won't give you a straight answer. When he starts talking about that Tether, he, he certainly knows things about Tether and about trading. He knows nothing about trading. And this is where everything that he said about Tether now just gets flushed down the toilet in my brain. Because that right there, you can you can apply that to everything that any cryptocurrency he's talking about. And this is the I mean, he's Ethereum co-founder, and he can't give you, a, a, a you know, a, any answers, straight answers, but just belief on things. And and one thing he was, I believe, uh, right about with Ethereum, was that he explained that he doesn't he does expect a series of irrationally exuberant price spikes up based on the retail boom we have on a cyclical. Hopefully on a cycl cyclical um, annual basis, uh, you know, around November, December, January. And then that, you know, followed by corrections, which will obviously dribble down if we don't get things like ETFs and other things to, you know, to be catalysts throughout the year. Adding that, each spike will, I believe, bring in a wave of new activity and bring fundamental infrastructure to the ecosystem. So they're actually hoping that this rationally exuberant price spikes go up so then they can actually scale up much faster than what they're scaling now because they can't even get into sharding and then you know moving over into uh, POS proof of stake uh, mining so 
Again, he's talking about Tether. So let's get into Tether. Uh, so basically, you know, if I'm going to sit here and talk shit about Tether, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to back it up. So I'm going to I want to show you guys why I'm backing this up, and, and we'll look at this whole proof of funds thing and everything that they're doing. Um, but it, it, to me, it's all bullshit. You know, I'm okay. So my question for Tether was, what's the function of Tether? You're backing it one to one USD. You're pegging it to the dollar one to one USD. Okay. What's the function of it besides pegging it to the dollar so you can just buy a dollar of bit of coin and know that it's always going to be a dollar. It's not going to change. Okay. So what's the point? Um, it's a stable currency. It's 100% backed. It's transparent. It's secure. Widespread integration and blockchain technology. All right. So why use Tether? Let, let's go into why use because it kind of shows you everything here. And now I'm actually using Brave today. So that's a great thing. I mean, it actually does run a lot smoother. No ads on here unless I want to see them. So uh, it, it's a great thing. So let's see where it gets into here. Uh, you know, I had it here yesterday. And of course, now I can't even find it. Um, but basically what they're basically saying is that you can leverage against uh, other coins. Ah, here we go. Let's go into FAQs. Um, uh, you can leverage it. So how does Tether work? Okay, Tether exists on blockchains through the Omni protocol. Um, it's 100% backed by actual fiat currency assets, USD. So the conversion rate is one Tether USDT equals one USD. Okay, one USD. Let's just keep that in mind. We all know it's a one to one ratio. But well, really, well, is it really pegged to the dollar? So the Tether platform is fully reserved when the sum of all Tethers in circulant is less than or equal to the balance of fiat currency held in our reserve. Okay, so who can use Tether? Businesses, exchanges, financiers, ATMs. How does Tether protect me from cryptocurrency volatility? You can change it into Tether. When you see things going down, obviously that's what they're saying the function is. That is not a function of a coin. There's no function of a coin. That is just something you can do with the coin. That is not a function. And, if, and that is really one of the things that they're really relying on, everybody seeing it as a function. See, the way I see things, you have to categorize things in order to plan things correctly. If you miscategorize your things, you're going to plan incorrectly. Now, I'm not saying it's not going to help you out in the short term. Tether absolutely does help people in the short term stave off losses and then you know turn it back into Bitcoin. But remember, you gotta pay, you gotta you gotta pay taxes for all those trades. Doesn't matter if you think that you you let you lost money and so on and so forth. You're still gonna pay for those trades. I'm telling you. Um, uh, where can I use it? Uh, is Tether transparent? They say yes. It's not. Uh, how much does Tether cost? It's you know based on the one-to-one -one thing. So it's going to cost you a dollar fiat for a dollar of, of of Tether. So, and that's just like any stable coin. They're, they're pegging it to the U.S. dollar. So, or, you know, China has their own coming out, so they're going to peg it to the, to the yen. Um, I believe that's China, yen. Maybe not. I mean, it's just Japan. Anyway, and then, uh, so... Let's get into Tether here a little bit. So I was, you know, kind of getting into Reddit here, and uh, how could Tether be used to pump up the price? Now this Blotto Otter guy, I mean, he he really does. Yeah, I mean, he puts it in a nutshell. I couldn't say it any better than this guy. Um, and he's basically saying, uh, he's he's replying to this guy's uh, a rant here, and he and he's basically. So the guy up top says, "How does this Tether printed from thin air get into the market?" And Blotto Otter says, "If we assume Tether is just." printing unbacked USDT. Here's how that would work, hypothetically. Tether prints up millions of USDT. Tether transfers millions of UC USDT to exchanges. Bitfinex in particular and Poloniex. Uh, Tether or its representatives place bids to buy Bitcoin with that USDT at a higher price than it is currently trading in USD. So if Bitcoin is trading at say 8,000 per Bitcoin, maybe they make to buy the offer at 8,500 USD per Bitcoin. And absolutely, people are going to, you know, they're going to sell it. Um, Tether Bitfinex would have no qualms about overpaying because they're not actually paying anything if they're paying with unbacked USDT instead of real USD. So they can just sit here and print all this shit, tell you that it's backed by USD, and then pay for Bitcoin for 8500 that no one else would ever do 
when it's you know trading at you're currently at eight thousand, and so everybody's going to sell it to them, and they're going to make basically free money. It, it's free money to them. That's how they're pumping things, and that's that's how Bitcoin gets pumped. That's again, that's what we're saying. If it's not backed by the USD, and I'm going to get into the, to why I think it's not backed by the USD uh, dollar. Uh, other traders who either don't realize they're selling BTC for USD instead of USD or who don't care because they believe USD is equivalent to the value of the USDT. Um, accept the offer to sell their Bitcoin, as I said. So end result, Tether Bitfinex has traded their unbacked uh, USD for BTC. Other traders have traded their BTC for unbacked USDT. And if the exchange reports trades in USD, USDT as the same as trades in USD, the price in USD just went up. So, I mean, I mean, absolutely an excellent summary. So, I mean, he just, and he continues to go on. Every time, you know, someone has a question, he breaks it down and gives them something back. And I mean, I'm gonna start following this guy. This guy is really, really logical, takes the emotion completely out of it, and uh, really has some good correlations. Not saying that, you know, they're, they're proven, but man, they, you know, the probability of these things happening based on if USDT is not backed by the US dollar, pegged to the dollar, he's completely right with everything that he says on here. And I, I really do suggest everybody go and find this. How could Tether be used to pump up the price? It's in Reddit under our Tether um, and CMEB. This was six months ago. He he, um, he he wrote this, but I mean, still, he's absolutely right. So is Tether backed by the US dollar? All right. So how, how to really get that? is basically say is how does the dollar affect the stock market is the fiat we're based on supply and demand of fiat okay and now we have we have a weak dollar and we have a strong dollar okay so well, how is it perceived strength of the dollar Can, you know it's it, this is basically talking about the trump campaign and um, and they're concerned about the strength of the dollar um because you know let me just read this. When the dollar is strong, U.S. stocks tend to outperform international equities. And when the dollar is weak, international stocks tend to outperform. outperform. This is all from the perspective of a U.S.-based investor. These relationships will be reversed for a foreign investor. So just vice versa if you're foreign looking in instead of looking out from the U.S. So looking at these at this chart, okay, this is the trade weight in U.S. dollar index, okay? So it fluctuates. I mean, it went down in 2012, 2011, and it's gone back up and it's now hanging around 90, 95 cents. So this is what I'm saying. How is it pegged to the dollar? I mean, really? Okay. So right now, today, the US dollar is worth 95 cents worldwide, 95 cents. Okay. So is it strong or is it weak? All right. So that's a, that's a weak dollar. It's under a dollar. So it's weak. So if it's worth 95 cents, why is the why is Tether? If you want to look at Tether here, where is it? Because it's not that far down this uh, the coin market cap here. So if you want to look at Tether, it's at 99 cents. OK, if, if it's pegged to the dollar, then why are we at 95 cents? And why wouldn't it be down to 95 cents? Why is it going up? Because they're because they're printing more USDT and not backing it by the US dollar. If they were backing it by the US dollar, the price of Tether would go down to 95 cents right now and follow this market right here. I mean, it's as simple as that. You cannot be 100% backed if you're not on USD, if you're not going with the flow of what you, I mean, of, of, what, of how much the actual dollar is worth right now. It's as simple as that. I mean, so it, that's kind of what we're what we're doing here. So, it, getting a little bit more into it, if the dollar collapses, how does the how does that affect cryptocurrency? Well, if the dollar collapses, you know, this is wrong. It's actually this guy right here. He he makes it kind of a, a better in a nutshell uh, way of saying it. If the dollar crowd collapses, then any cryptocurrency price in the USD will rise exponentially because nobody's going to have any um, uh, confidence in the in the fiat anymore, and they're going to turn it into something else, whether it be gold, silver, or uh, an intangible asset like cryptocurrency. They're going to change it. They're not going to keep it in some shit fiat that we've had since 1971 
that it's just been been manip- manip- manipulated and not going well for us. It is. I mean, it went well for us, I believe, right out the gate. 70s, 80s, we were doing good. 90s, and then 2000s, we just hit a shithole. And 2010s, we're still trying to we're still trying to rebound. Um, and it's you know we almost lost it. Uh, we almost we almost went down, you know, in a, in, a, in a depression, and we didn't hit it. Just you know. Uh, you know, basically based on uh, regulations have been kind of lessened throughout the couple of years. Um, can you blame that on Trump? I don't know, you know, but, you know, it, it, it is what it is. So, uh, you know, they're going, he's kind of going over things and, and, and some correlations. So he's basically saying that, you know, when USDT went down, Bitcoin went up um, is kind of what they're saying. So and, and, and is that a correlation? Yeah, I don't know. Is it a direct link? No, not, not, not at all. But he is basically saying like things like, well, as mentioned, there would be global can Panama and the greenback did actually fall last year by 20 percent. So it was down to 80 cents. OK, is Tether ever gone on 80 cents? No, it's not. And it's not ever going to stay with it. So we were again, we were comparable to the Great Recession last year. And so we were actually close to a collapse of it, um, although it has since regained at least half of the ground loss in 2017. Great. When out, I believe this was what June fifth is when he wrote this. So, uh, when North Korea fired their missile, I watched both gold and Bitcoin jump. Now, this is what he's saying. There's a direct link to this, and I don't believe there's a direct link there. But um, I believe gold did definitely go up because definitely people are going to put it more in a tangible asset um, that they can uh, trade with or buy things with. If if the shit hits the fan, apocalypse or you know. Um, uh, depression or whatever recession whatever you want to call it but i am quite confident that in times of financial trouble it will rise so i'm waiting for the next retail boom it's coming i mean everything that i've been uh, reading about the retail boom it, it's coming down the pipeline pretty pretty quick here so um you know again you know when you're looking at tether you know keep these things in mind i mean these are really the fundamental things that they're really really hoping that everybody just doesn't catch that the conversion rate is one tether equals one usd well that's not true because tether right now is at 99 cents and usd is at 95 cents so how can you say that that does, a dollar is not worth a dollar i don't know why uh, anybody can argue that but that's the point when when it's 95 cents it's not a dollar and so why is tether trading at 99 cents and what are they doing with that other four cents for every single tether that they're doing so and, and you know, let's look into that i did want to show you the um, the last thing that I think Tether is just, um, just, just, uh, fudding or just lying about just basically, you know, I think I've already downloaded this. So let me see if I can find it here. Yeah, it's this one right here. Let's see if I can open it. Oh, geez. Well, anyway, with the proof of funds here, basically, it says, it says that they're not using GAAP, which is the accounting um, regulations that we use here in America or international uh, accounting. They use nothing. They're using some company that is basically saying we had them write off on the proof of funds. And there's like two billion five hundred and thirty five billion or something like that you know, million in there. And it was just, it was just crazy. That they're telling you, oh, we have proof of funds, but hey, guess what? We're not using any accounting and this doesn't go by anybody's regulations and we're just signing it saying, yeah, we have that much. Do they really do? Is it really backed by USD? And, and I mean, it's not. And so, it, the, you know, the questions when they say yes, I mean, just wholeheartedly yes. And you give them a, a question like, well, how can it be when USD is 95 cents and Tether is 99 cents? How, how is this 100% backed? You know what I mean? And not any more than it should be. Well, we're paying you more than we should be under this assumption that it's one to one ratio. So, you know, keep that in mind with Tether. I hate Tether and I, and I really think that everybody's getting duped. I and mean, I was getting duped in the beginning until I really said, wait a minute, there's no such thing as a stable coin in the stock market unless it's backed by something like gold or something like that. And then they call it a sta- um, stable stock. You know what I mean? Uh, it's for the most part. So... That's tether for you. I hate it. I think it's uh, I think it's shit, and I think everybody is uh, kind of getting 
um, uh, duped a little bit right now, but it's staving off, you know, losses in the, in the short run. So Empower here, you know, I've been doing Empower for, you know, over a month now and it is, it is, it's a great platform. I just post on here like Facebook and uh, I just moved up in a tier. So I'm like second degree orange or first degree orange now, almost to a star. And I make like 20 bucks a day now just posting and hitting all these goals and stuff and as opposed to, you know, five, 10 bucks a day I was starting out with. So um, it, it's a great little platform. Crowd holding. Again, this is just something that I'm making free crypto on and it did a huge spike. So I just got to wait till it spikes up again and I'm able to cash them all out and make a bunch of money. So it's a hurry up and wait game, but it only takes me about 30, 45 minutes a day to, to hit all my goals on empowering and go. Crowd holding is another one. You know what I mean? I put my two cents down here like a lot of people do. And if they get upvoted and replied to and so on and so forth, they, they, they get um, part of this, yep, this $2,400 yep, they'll, they'll give you some of it. So great things to see, you know, moving down the pipeline here, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin's looking great. Everything's in the green for the most part today. Big gains for a lot of, for a lot of, uh, Dogecoin, 45% up, you know, at the moment, Burge 25%, Sia coin 20. I mean, looking great today. So it, it's going to be a good weekend, you know, and, and futures is close. So, which is again, where's the manipulation coming from? It's just people who are holding a lot of Bitcoin are taking their money out and putting their money back in, taking their money out, putting their money back in. And, you know, I'll get into this in my next video, but correlating it to the times of when Asia opens, UK opens, and America relatively opens, you know, in these generally sensed areas, you can find correlations in there. And not, it's not patternistic, it's correlations. So it's just something to think about when, uh, you know, we're all looking at this stuff and... Um, yeah, that's uh, kind of things I have to deal with with Brave is this new platform I got to get used to. So last but not least, Crypto Fear and Greed Index, 21 today, 17 yesterday, 19 last week. Still kind of dribbling down there on the bottom here, but um, sentiment is starting to look a little bit better now. We're in, we're in September, and I think the uh, perspective is, is in, uh, you know, high hopes anyways. You know, expect the worst, hope for the best, you know, month. Uh, this month. So you guys have a great weekend. My name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please smash the like button, hit the bell, comment below. Uh, it all has no value to you guys, but it has great value to me. Keep up the grind.